Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary if you're new here and today we're going to be going over my April wrap up. I've got most of my books here. We'll quickly go through some stats. In April I read eight books which is a little bit less than usual but as we know I've been getting through my reading slump and I think it's officially over thankfully but you know, March and April weren't the best reading months. So I listened to one audiobook, I read two ebooks, and I then read five physical books that I owned. Out of the eight books, seven were romance, and one was a memoir. We're just in the romance era. I don't know what to say. It's the only thing that was really getting me interested in reading and so that's all that we read. Also you'll see something new <laughs> in this background that's kind of taken up a lot of space. Uh, we got the cats a little teepee hut. Usually I have our like basket of blankets here and it's all cozy but now we have a teepee and they're not using it but we literally got it yesterday so we'll see. Sometimes it takes them weeks to start using something we bought for them so tell you spices here though. The first book that I read in April was Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Monaghan. I loved Nora Goes Off Script so I was very excited to get into this book and they were so opposite from each other. So Same Time Next Summer is more of like a youthful love, young love meets like second chance romance between Sam and Wyatt who like were in love as teenagers and then they meet each other again. I believe it's 10 years later or 15 years later. This book really had a great grasp on how it feels to be in love for the first time when you're young and you don't know what to do with all the feelings and emotions and you don't know if it's love or if it's just infatuation. I love those parts of it, but then other parts it just felt so youthful, naive, and not that interesting. So it was very a mixed bag of emotions for me. I did end up giving this three and a half stars, so I, I enjoyed it. It's very short and sweet, but I also definitely love Nora Goes Off Script a lot more. Also, I feel like the ending was quite rushed and you don't get to see them together again for a long period of time. It's just like back together and that's the end. And I do love a good epilogue where you get to see them two years down the line or somewhat where things feel more put together and you get that like happily ever after. But I feel like we didn't get a lot of that in this book. The next book I read was Will They or Won't They by Ava Wilder. So this one, actually this one and the next few books were in my spin the wheel reading challenge, but this is like right in the beginning of the challenge where I finished this book. So this one is about two actors, actresses, Lila and Shane, who meet at a audition for a series that they actually get casted on. They have a romance together and then the timeline is like from that to then present day where it's years and years later they have to work together again but they are kind of like enemies and so they're kind of battling through that and you get kind of snippets throughout the book of why they aren't talking anymore and you don't really know why for a majority of the book and you kind of figure it out along the way but I feel like it wasn't such a grand reveal. This book also felt incredibly long. I believe it's all over 400 pages. No, um, no, it's actually not. Mm, it's not that long at all. It's 368 pages. It felt like it was an almost 500 page book. It just felt really long for so much miscommunication to happen and even like halfway through the book I was like I don't really care about what happens with them honestly. Like if they get together or not, it doesn't really matter to me. It will definitely be a book that I am unhauling. It's not that I don't recommend it. You know, I still gave it three stars. There were parts I did enjoy, but it just wasn't my cup of tea, but I know a lot of people loved it. So it could have just been the mood that I was in while reading it. I don't know. A good old middle of the road, three stars. The next book I read was Wild Love. And again, I go into, you know, a full review in my last video, but this is the first book in the new Rose Hill series by Elsie Silver. I'm a Chestnut Spring series stan. Love that series to death. It's not that I feel disappointed with this book, but... I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to love it. I still gave it four and a half stars. I still think it's it was really, really, really good. But there was just something that was missing, a little spark that was missing. 
and I have a feeling it is a part of that like cowboy atmosphere that she has in the Chestnut Springs series where you know you're on a ranch it feels more homey and welcoming and here your main male character Ford is a billionaire who owns like a record company record label I guess you could say but I will definitely continue reading the series as it comes out I definitely recommend you picking it up it is brother's best friend romance a boss and assistant type romance but like not really but that is one of the tropes um, there is a single dad trope that's all I'm gonna say about that. I just wish it had something a little bit more to give it that full five stars. The next book I read was Just for the Summer, which is Abby Jimenez's new release. And I give this 4.75 and I'm such a stickler because I usually never give the 0.25, but there's just something, a little something that's stopping me from giving this five stars. But I absolutely loved this book and I devoured it in like two or three days. This book was a lot more emotional than I thought it was gonna be, but I also felt like I got those warnings the couple days that I didn't read it after the release date because everyone that was reading it was like, this cute cover does not <laughs> reflect how emotional the book is and how the two characters, Emma and Justin, just go through a bunch of shit together. They have both a lot of family problems that they're working through. Um, and there's also little nuggets of other characters from prior books in the series. I did not know it was connected to part of your world and yours truly, but it is. So you'll kind of see hints of characters from those books in it. So that was a surprise. But yeah, this was just a really unique concept and also a really beautiful book where you get like heartbroken and it's heart-wrenching and you're rooting for them so hard yet there's also that love and that romance that keeps you going like my heart hurt i love them together and i was rooting for them i was rooting for the side characters too some of the side characters were a bit crazy but i was enjoying all of it through and through emma did annoy me a little bit with some of her mommy issues but it's okay we got through it in the end and i absolutely loved it the next book i read was the audiobook of finding me by viola davis which is viola davis's memoir and i gave this five stars first of all i don't really like rating memoirs but i also hate not rating a book so usually with memoirs it's not that i am rating their life story it's more so of just like the writing um if i found it engaging and all of that i did not really know much about viola davis going into this but one of my friends read it and said it was so beautifully heartbreaking and that i had to listen to it so it was on my list for a while and then i just decided to listen to it over the month and it was beautifully heartbreaking she went through so much in her life and the resiliency and the determination she had to become an actress was so beautiful to listen and hear and there are so many moments and passages that i will keep with me that she said in this book and there are a couple that i did write down in my reading journal with my review but it is a beautiful memoir filled with hope and a beautiful, beautiful message. And I really highly recommend you listen to it if you can. I listened to it off Libby, so through my library, and it was a fantastic experience. The next book I read was The Rule Book by Sarah Adams, which is like the second book following this book, The Cheat Sheet. So the rule book follows Nora and Derek, and Derek is a fellow football player on the same team as Nathan from the cheat sheet. And this one is kind of also a second chance romance. So Nora and Derek dated in college, and then Nora broke up with Derek. And then later on, years down the road, Nora becomes Derek's new, what are they called? Not assistant, agent, sports agent. And at first he's like, hell no, I'm firing you. I'm not dealing with this. But then she begs him to basically give her a shot because she is going to be a fantastic agent. And then he says, yes. So they start working together. And of course their relationship then becomes more 
than just a professional relationship. I love this more than the cheat sheet. Uh, there was also spice in this, which is not very common for Sarah Adams books. So if you are trying to avoid spice, this does have a chapter of it, but it definitely did not take away from the book and the story. I don't know. I just love them. I feel like there was just so much angst and so much history between both of them and you just want them to end up together. And you know, they work really hard to support each other and you learn their history as to why Nora broke up with him in the first place. I adored it. I gave it four and a half stars. Highly recommend it. And I really, really wish that she didn't marry off the rest of the team because I would have loved to see this become a full series of like their core. I think there's five, four or five of them. Uh, I really wish she didn't marry them off. The next book I read was Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This book is such a toxic mess and I loved it. I gave this four stars. This is a book following two characters named Magnolia and BJ who are dating each other. They are like high society in London, rich families. I've seen people say it's like Gossip Girl but like the London version and they're adults and I would definitely see how people combine those two together and get this book. It's toxic there is that kind of gossip girl-esque to it where everyone gossips about everyone. Very toxic relationship and I like hated them for some parts of the book and other parts of the book I was really rooting for them. And I also enjoyed a lot of the side characters. And spoiler, I read Daisy Hates. I finished it literally yesterday, so in May. But the series follows Magnolia and BJ and then Daisy Hates is Christian Daisy and Julian's point of view. So it's really nice to see it all like well-rounded where you're following most of the characters and you're getting to know them. But even then there are some side characters you don't get their POV from, but you still really want to know more about them and just want to kind of appreciate them and live in this atmospheric world. I've gotta say this surprised me. I didn't know if I was gonna like it because I'm not a big fan of very extremely toxic relationships in books, but this one got me and I am, as you can see, definitely continuing the series. Last but not least, I read Funny Story by Emily Henry, as most of us did <laughs> in the month of April or May. I gave this four and a half stars, which is surprising because I gave Happy Place five stars, but I think I'm gonna retract that five stars because I did like Funny Story better than Happy Place now that I think about it, but I don't think this is a five star read. I know, confusing, but you know, my brain doesn't have to make sense to everybody. Most of the time I find my ratings change as time progresses. And so sometimes five stars aren't five stars and sometimes four to four and a half stars become five stars with time. Emily Henry does it again. I absolutely adored this book. Oh, uh, my heart for a good like 30 to 50 pages was shattered near the end. Like I could not breathe. I was screaming. This is a story of Daphne and Miles. So Daphne and Miles are both engaged and then the people that they're engaged to break off their engagements to be together. And so Daphne is kind of forced into becoming Miles's roommate because she has nowhere else to live. And so you kind of follow along both of them healing through their breakup and then kind of using each other to try and make their respective partners or ex-partners jealous. And then you go from there. There was just so much fun in this book, but there was also so much heartbreak in this book. I loved seeing both of them kind of heal with each other and also support each other in ways that were not a part of their relationships, but just a part of their life and the different traumas and things that we all have, um, but they were able to trust each other with that information and build like a very strong bond. I really adored them. I didn't love all the side characters. Some of them I felt were very obnoxious, but I did love Daphne and Miles overall. I think Miles might be my new M.H.M. favorite book boyfriend. 
I loved this Crocs wearing man. I don't know what to say. And so those were all the books that I read in April. It was a very romance filled month, but it was overall a pretty good reading month. I have to say so myself. If you've read any of these books this past month, let me know what you thought. I read a lot of new releases. I think I read four new releases, which I don't tend to read a lot of new releases when they come out. So that's also pretty surprising. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Lazy Sunday mornings hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play your favorite movie, laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just us.